because every time when we have a training program, we always have empty front seats. What you could do is that those who sit at the front, at the front seats, are late covers. But now it's not that. So, this is what happened in every training program. But don't worry, it's not your fault. It's the teachers who teaches you. It's a school system that had that, that uh, uh, you know that encourages us to sit at the back. Do you agree? All of us we always sit at the back, no? When you have the meetings or when you go to church, you will always sit at the back, right? Those who sit in the front rows in the church are only those who came late. Why? You know why? Because you don't want to take responsibility. Number two, we have some emotional problems with us. So as far as I think all of you must have heard the word all round, all round development. What is soy? I hope all of you know about soy. Soy is the uppermost part of the earth. So now, in this part, I'm going to show you about the composition of the soil. This is the lower part in which we call it the bedrock powder, which we see the gravel. This is the bedrock in which the, all the rocks are formed from the lower part. And then comes the next is the sand. In this space, we see there is an area, or in this space, we can see there is a lot of seal or in which the value of teaching learning materials. We never understand the value of teaching aids on the hand of the teacher. We never understand the value of learning aids in the hands of the students. So it's important for us to, you know, to understand that these aids these materials, these materials that you have developed today and these last few days that you have uh, done your work, you will find that these, they motivate the students. They become motivators. Okay? Especially when you are, many of us, when we teach, all of us, you know, we have, we have different quality of teaching, isn't it? Some of us can motivate the students very well. Some of us, some of, some of, some of, uh, some of us could not motivate much. Okay. But you know, by using teaching learning materials, that will bring about, when you say motivation, that will bring about interest in them on the part of the students. You know? That will bring about uh, curiosity in the part of the students. You know? Because the moment they see something you know, different in the classroom, because every day they only see what? They only see only the textbook. You know? But you start bringing something different. If you start using something different, then that will motivate the child, means that will create interest on the part of the children, that will create curiosity on the part of the children. Okay? Are you clear? Okay? And in that way, they will have interest in learning, in that way, they will give attention to your teaching learning. Okay? To your, to your teaching. Okay? And not only that, remember that day we are talking about objectives, learning experience and evaluation. Remember? So, if you use TLMs, it's just like giving them the learning experiences. Without the t uh, these materials, children cannot, we cannot say that they experience only by listening from the teacher. Clear images. When we do what? When we see, isn't it? When we see, 
when we taste, when we touch, when we smell. Okay? So all, all that means that if we can see, if we can touch, you know, if we can smell, means we are doing what? We are trying, we are exploring, isn't it? Not? We are exploring. But and that, that also, and also there is a direct contact. Direct contact with what we are learning. Right? Okay? So if we are teach, if you are teaching on any topic, for example on the topic of plants, you know, if you bring a specimen, you know, if you bring a chart, if you bring a model of the particular plant, then they can touch, isn't it? If you teach about flower, if you bring a flower, you can do dissection of a flower, isn't it? So you can do, you can explore. You can dissect the flower, you can smell the flower, you can see, you can touch, you can feel. It is what you can say, a direct experience. It's different from if you just draw it on a whiteboard or a blackboard, means they are only using the sense of sight. It's not. Then 70% we remember from what we say. Monikna. See? Monikna Angi. We, if we are able to say <coughs> something from what we have here, from what we have seen, then that will be, we will remember it, 70 years. We know it as a kingdom, Sutunga kingdom, or that uh, kingdom which is ruled by Usim Sutunga. So what happened at that time, we know that Usim Sutunga is one of the famous kings of the ancient time. Nearly all these areas in, and the adjacent areas here, it was ruled by him. And this is the kingdom which have been ruled by that king at that, uh, during that time. So, this thing, it's happened, so one day, when he went to these areas, okay, he see the plains of Bangladesh. So what happened then? He lighted as, you see that this place, it is one of the most fertile places. So what happened? Then he planned. He went back to the kingdom. After that, he planned with his uh, subjects here in uh, Sukhumar. Then after that, after they plant, then they launch an attack. Okay, they, they invade this plains of Bangladesh. For what? First of all, is they wanted this place. Because you know that this place is one of the fertile, uh, fertile place and it is uh, uh, located near the river. That means Umar is here, the other side there is this plain. At that time, this plain also was called in Bangladesh as Silhat or Shilat, as we know. So this Siem Sutuna, when he attacked this area, he went. He went the battle. Then he annexed this place and extended his empires up to Bangladesh. Then, what we see there, uh, this Siem Sutuna, yeah, when he settled here, after he annexed this place, so after a course of time, he met a woman there in Bangladesh, then he married her, and her name is Jayanta. So when he met Jayanta, he made her a queen, he settled there, then times and again, there's people from this area, from Sukhna Kingdom, especially from Natyam, Nangba, 
So to they went there for treat. That means now it has this area with the plains of uh, Bangladesh, they have a close relation. How? Because Suyen is there, or the Sutunga King is here. So it's easy for them to reach there. So they have a, a trace with them here. Then in course of time, these people, they start to settle. And what we see here is this Sutunga also start to settle here because why? In summertime, it is very hot. So apparently here, he went back to this hill. And he makes not young asses capital, that means uh, summer research, to stay here during summertime because it's hot there. And in winter time, he went back here and he stayed here. We also see here that his subjects, as I'm doing you right from the start, they settled here. At that time, as we know that there is no political boundary. People, they can go freely. As well as the king is there and the subject is here, they can go and have a relation with the people of Bangladesh. Migration in terms of agricultural purpose and educational purpose. Okay, first, we will see about Mamabs, a small farmer from Jantia. And this Mama belonged to a very poor family at, at the beginning. He first stayed his plea in Gentia, where the land is unfertile. So after a few years later on, one of his relatives from Bangla, he urged Mama to set his farming or to set his agricultural purpose in Bangla. So he moved on to Bangla, and after a few years, Mama settled down in Bangla with his wife and two children. Again, later on, Mama thought that in Bangla there are no sufficient schools or college. Mama took his son to Bangalore for further education. So his son Daman went to Bangalore at Indian Academy Degree College. After receiving his degree from this college, he then moved to Tuva. At Tuva, he get a job from a director of education. And also, as conclusion, Davans also settled down in Tuva with his wife and children, so and so on. This is not a real story, but it is based on imagination or imaginative story. That's all. Thank you.